All right, and we are live. What is up, everybody? Aaron the dog back with his first breakdown of the week. A little later in the week, I did miss the contender series hot take. I have Bo Nickel, um, but back with my first breakdown of the week. It is the Bellator 284 breakdown show. Uh, Bellator 284 headlined by Neiman Gracie versus um, versus uh, Gochi Yamauchi from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. A few other good fights on the card. I'm uh, going to put this one out. It's going to be a little bit quicker of a breakdown video. Um, some of the fights are pretty clear cut and not a lot of room. I am doing this post weigh-ins. Um, Iliar McFarland missed weight. Um, uh, Hoik's opponent missed weight by three or four pounds. They canceled the fight. McFarland missed by four pounds. Um, and then also, uh, yeah, a few other. Uh, Ke- Justine Keish missed by like uh, several pounds as well. Uh, so one fight canceled. Uh, the other two are on. The two fighters who missed by more weight, their fights are still on. Who knows? So that will go into it. But uh, also, I'll throw in the PFL picks at the end, too. I think the Russian guy was going to face Roy McDonald this out because it's PFL. So why not? Um, but going to start here. Uh, good to have everybody with us. Uh, sorry I didn't miss the Contender Series this week. I did have a good show. Um, but I was on vacation. I was in South Dakota. So, uh, yeah, we got bump fights tomorrow, so you're getting the bump breakdown, Kelly. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, starting with uh, not a bum, just a bum matchup here, in my opinion. Mitchell McKee taking on Tony Ortega, although Mitchell, uh, early on in his career, I'm not going to hate on it too much at 2-0. Uh, familiar with him from the LFA scene and also as a wrestler at Minnesota, uh, where he was very, very solid. So only 24 years old, taking on the 29-year-old Nebraskan Tony Ortega, five and four he is, hasn't fought since uh, last year. He is on a two-fight win streak, two uh, finishes in those over a three-and-one Nate Morrow and a rear naked choke of Ashton Kananiga. Uh, so good, you know, to decent uh, wins. Uh, shock Vanderford fans. I'll get to that one in a second, Kelly. Um, lost to not great levels of competition, a two-and-two injury against Terrence Almond, a four-and-six fighter, got a rear naked choke finish on him. Got armbarred by a one and one Corey Roberts, lost to Dwight uh, Joseph in his debut. Um, Mitchell McKee, he looks to be the good so far. Uh, this is his Bellator debut at 24 years old, 5'7 on Minnesota, as I said. Two quick finishes, uh, one coming in the second round, actually. So went to the second round in his debut, which I don't hate at all. Uh, Mitchell McKee quickly disposed of Jalen Jackson in the next fight. Jalen Jackson, a longer striker, but on one. Um, Mitchell, power wrestler, powerful guy. I think he is a pretty promising prospect. I don't think he'll have much trouble with Mr. Ortega here. I do like the momentum Ortega's on, but uh, other than that, I do think Mitchell should kind of be able to show out here. Um, weigh-ins for both these guys. They did make weight. They look to be in decent shape. Mitchell's shot up to a minus 750 favorite, plus 500 on Ortega. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily suggest putting it too much, but I do believe Mitchell rolls in that one. Uh, a lot of talk about uh, Aaron Jeffrey here. Two two guys in the chat. So right on. Next fight, uh, not canceled, but definitely, I think, a little bit of a uh, squash fight here. Bailey Schoenfelder, uh, 1-0 and uh, wrestler. Uh, also, I believe, uh, pretty po- promising, but they're being brought along slowly here. Mark Courier, uh, his opponent here. Um, one and one Mark Courier, um, you know, both these guys, heavyweights, Mark Courier is going to be the much larger heavyweight. He comes in at 265, um, Bailey looking like he could be more towards the 205. This dude's got, you know, mitts here. One and one in his career uh, out of Iowa, Mason City fight team, and also a Gracie fighter there. Um, won by strikes there against a one and two opponent. Lost to Hammer Morton by uh, TKO in his debut there. Um, yeah, overall, very big guy, as I said, coming in at the 265 limit. Um, he's going against a very promising uh, prospect here in Bailey Schoenfeld, Berserk. Um, you know, he really does fight. He hasn't fought since August of last year. Pulled away Corey Mogenberg. Uh, that was a fight at a catch weight of 225. Um, this fight, again, you know, is at a heavyweight bout. So maybe Bailey comes a little bit bigger. He weighed around 230 for his... LFA debut. This is his second fight with Bellator now. He's 2-0. Um, should smash through Courier, who has been put away, uh, both as an amateur and a pro. Uh, not a great amateur career for him, but, you know, pretty long one. 
it's going to be a big size difference, but I think that Bailey's good enough, but he's, you know, well into the four digit range here. So minus 1400, there's not much to think about here. You're not going to be betting him. So yeah, Carol's out. <laughs> Uh, Moy's audio. If you don't follow Moy's audio on Twitter, he is a fantastic follow. You must be following him. It's Priscilla Cachuera week as well. So the carousel conductor approves of this. I'm glad Moy's uh, good to have you here. Um, but yeah, two two smashes to start out with the wrestlers. Hoykett, as I said, his opponent Nick Perez uh, weighed in three pounds too heavy or two pounds or pound and a half too heavy, and I guess they canceled the fight. So or uh, he weighed at 157 for a 145 fight. So he was 11 pounds heavy. My mistake. Um, get why they canceled that. Um, next fight, two O and O fighters, Patrick Downey versus Jeff Souter. Here, um, Patrick Downey, I have uh, been following on the grappling scene for some time now. Definitely a character, very uh, talented grappler as well. Um, Jeff Souter had to seek out him a little more. It's O and O versus O and O. Souter two and two as an amateur and has been a bare knuckle, and he's going against a grappler now. One of his wins, you know, was a rear naked or a guillotine. Uh, he got knocked out in his two losses. Um, Patrick Downey, not a not a uh, bare knuckle fighter, re- former wrestler, uh, 30 years old now, uh, comes into this fight. He had some trouble at ADCC. Uh, no, no shame there. He got submitted by Damon Ramos there. Jake Shields, he's been in there with. He's been in uh, with Gordon Ryan as well, where he actually won in the wrestling aspect lost in the grappling um i just think there's levels to this but this is his mma debut he does not have an amateur record so carousel conductor approves of this i'm sure but yeah patrick downey should roll minus 1400 though is not what i'm looking to get involved with a lot of watching early on on this card uh, unfortunately but uh next fight Sullivan Colley versus tyson jeffries um, real quick, Tyson Jeffries weighed in at 201 for this fight. I don't try to judge just on that, but Tyson Jeffries has not fought in three years. He's 14 uh, and 10. It's a very padded 14 and 10 for the anti-hero here. Um, I just think that this is, you know, kind of a waste of time here. Sullivan Colley, a very promising prospect, doesn't need this, but he's facing a guy with 24 <laughs> You know, fights in his career out of ATT Portland. He got knocked out by Salman Ademir. That's fine. I don't really know who that is in 2018. 2017, he got knocked out by Ben Eagley. If you're at all familiar with Ben Eagley, he is a very uh, solid grappler. Um, not known for his power at all. It was in the fifth round of that fight. So there is that. But still, you know, hasn't fought since 2018. Came in at weighing 201. Uh, his fight in 2018 was at middleweight at 180, to be exact. Before that, got knocked out by a uh, welterweight. He weighed at 168 for that fight. Sullivan Colley, um, we're familiar with him. Yes, Sullivan Colley under one and a half, I do believe. Um, Colley's going to come in and smash this guy, in my opinion. Ryan Breeder, protege, 26 years old. Really looks the part so far. Put away our boy Ben Parrish in the first round, unfortunately, of that fight. Deion Clash, a sneaky good win there over a good grappler. I really rate Deion Clash very well in that fight, actually. And uh, Sullivan passed the test. And then a knockout in the first round. Three knockouts in the first round. It's going to be four. Huge size advantage for Cauley. Looked good making weight. He's going to get a knockout on the prelims, and it's going to be ugly. So Sullivan Cauley is my pick for that fight. The odds uh, currently, I would assume this is the biggest. I'm looking at these odds as they're coming in. This should be the biggest favorite, but he's minus 1,000. You can put him as a free parlay booster because he's not losing this fight, in my opinion. And Bukali under one and a half as well is my pick by knockout. Next fight is a real nasty, kind of a shitty, a shitter of a fight at uh, 125 here, including a weight miss from Justine Keish. Um, here taking on Deanna Bennett, two veterans of the game. They've been around. Deanna did make weight 12 and 7 versus the 8 and 5 Keish. Um, you know, 34 versus 37. Keish has a lot of injuries as well. Coming off that uh, decision win over Ilmir McFarlane, where McFarlane's still higher on the card, whatever. Uh, but solid win there. Uh, faced Deanna Bennett in Bellator 274. Deanna Bennett won that fight, out grappled her. Uh, I think that Deanna Bennett can do that again, honestly. Uh, I don't see what really changes here. That was in February of 2022. Um, you know, Bennett 
uh, made weight. I think that's going to favor her as the fight goes on. She's a better grappler still. She knows how to beat Keish. It was literally her last win uh, was Keish. This is just a weird kind of call here. Um, I Nothing's changed for me. I got Bennett still. Uh, I would not be betting it too heavily. For one, uh, Keish missed weight. That could play in her advantage. Uh, and also, Bennett, you know, is not a favorite. I would get behind uh, too voluntarily myself. So Deanna Bennett is my pick. She is a minus 250 favorite. That's way too much. It's going to be a close fight. Keish can easily get a split or easily get a decision. So betting Keish would be my only side here, but I'm not betting either side myself. That's just a fight I'm staying away from. Uh, and just a reminder, I am going to be doing the Cage Warriors breakdown show with uh, Norton of or Lewis of Norton MMA at 2 o'clock p.m., 7 o'clock his time. So right after I finish this and at the end again, PFL, uh, picks. Uh, I'm doing a quick picks of those as well. Next fight, my favorite fight on the card and very deserving of being a featured uh, prelim here at Bantamweight. Love this guy and Josh Hill and Marcus Bren uh, Marcos Brennan. Breno uh, really, really impressed me over Ari Farias, who might have booked his ticket to UFC uh, this past weekend, beating Mishinori Tanaka with LFA. I'm Breno, Scary good power, man. Really, really impressive striker. He hasn't faced the best level of competition, but this looks like a Brazilian who can really get in there and bang. 24 years old, out of Amazon school. This guy has so much promise. What he did to Ari Farias, I get it was only in a minute, but that is no joke, man. Ari Farias has been in there with some good competition. Marcus Breno starched him and put him away quickly. Made me look like a fool. Um, unfortunately, Breno's had a little bit of trouble getting a fight since then. I uh, tried to have a few in Brazil, uh, one with Bellator, where his opponent tested positive for COVID in June. So, so Bellator debut has been put off a little bit. Taylor Lapoulis, uh, is lost with Arias. Learned a lot from that decision loss. Did not look lost in there at all. Um, other than, you know, then the last two, over 7-0, Leandro Da Silva, knockout. Then Ari Farias, as I said. But, man, this is a tough, tough second go about it. Or second, you know, f or first fight in Bellator. Josh Hill. The gentleman has been looking excellent. 21 and four hasn't fought since December of 2021. So he's been off all of this year, but I don't necessarily mind that. The overhand right on Scoggins starts him, usually a decision type of fighter. Had a really competitive fight with uh, Raytheon Stotts, um, who's one of the best, if not the best, 135 from Bellator. Benicia Zaney, uh, Eric Perez, Algaria. I mean, whoever you put him in there with, Jesse Arnett. And also had a very close loss to Tierra Lapoulis. Uh, this is going to be an awesome fight, I think, man. Uh, it's just hard for me. I think that Josh Hill gives the young Breno another lesson here uh, and edges out a decision. Uh, I'm not super, super confident on this one. 35 years old now is Josh Hill, and Breno is 24. That's an 11-year age difference. Could really be a difference athletically. I just think that this is a little bit of too tough of a debut in Bellator, and I didn't, you know, while the Farias fight was impressive, I mean, he starched and put him away. It's like, what more could you want? He didn't show, like, quite a complete game yet. I'm kind of curious. I think Hill's going to test him in all aspects, not just going to stand there and trade. He's going to be avoiding that power, especially early. So I do like Josh Hill here. And he is at, if, I, if you can get him around minus 150, minus 160, I like it. Anything above that, I think it's a sit back and watch two really good, uh, 135ers go at it because I do think Breno's a live dog here with that power. And these guys are very good. So really good end of the prelims there. Moving on to the main card. This is a fight that uh, a lot of people have been chirping about in the comments. I'm very, very excited to talk about this one. But it is at 185 uh, between Mr. Van Zant or Vandeford, if you want to call him that, Austin Vandeford, uh, coming off of a uh, – that rough uh, fight against uh, Musasi uh, got ground pounded out pretty quickly in that fight. Um, you know, it was a it was a rough one for him. Take on Aaron Jeffries, the surging Aaron Jeffries, 29 years old. As Aaron Jeffries, 32, is Austin Vanderford. Aaron Jeffrey, 12 and three, uh, six two, 73 and a half inch reach out. Niagara top team. He's looked very good in his last two. Um, the Rex Harris fight showed he came back from actually some decent adversity in that one. Um, to get the win. Um, Fabio Aguero fight, another one where he really poured it on uh, and he seemed to get stronger as the fight goes on. I like his uh, motor and I like his overall, you know, 
uh, well-roundedness. He does, you know, at times kind of take too much of a beating, but I don't think that will be a problem here. I think that this is going to, you know, be a similar fight to the Colin Huckbody fight, the Andre Petrosky fight. Those are two fights where um, the clinch game of Jeffrey was really, really solid. Um, he throws good knees. He keeps a good distance from – he knows how to – he has good takedown defense, keeps good distance from grapplers, um, uses his cardio, confident in strikes. Um, I think this is a spot for Vandeford that I guess I'm not the only one on because um, I think that uh, – I think there's a real chance for Jeffrey in this spot. Vanderford coming into uh, that title shot against Masazi, he was very dominant. A lot of wrestling and arm triangles. That's what he did. Uh, his last two against Fabian Edwards and Vinicius de Jesus started to see some chinks in the armor, and then Musazi fully uh, exposed it. So for me, I do think that uh, Vanderford kind of coasted to beating a certain level of opponent. Uh, but mm -hmm. You know, to me, I think that he's a little undersized for the 185 division. I think the size of Jeffries or in the speed of Jeffries could be a little bit of an issue. Um, and to me, if, when Vanderford doesn't get that wrestling going, he does have the ability to be cracked and fold. I don't I don't see this as a shock, but I think a lot of people will. Um, I have Aaron Jeffrey in this fight. Um, I think he has the ability to possibly finish Austin, if not. Uh, edge out of decision. I see Austin struggling at, you know, sometimes to get his game going. The last three fights, I believe he's gone to a decision, but pretty low level of competition with Fabian Edwards uh, and Vinicius de Jesus. I rate Aaron Jeffrey higher than that. I think this is a huge opportunity. Buyer beware with Jeffrey. The spots where he's had the big opportunity in his career, he's typically um, faltered. So that is to be uh, prefaced here. But um, I think a lot of people are, you know, going to be surprised uh, tomorrow night. I got the plus 165 dog in Aaron Jeffrey here, minus 200 on Vandeford. I don't uh, agree with that. I think Aaron Jeffrey has faced a lot of similar types of opponents, the Huckbys, the Petroskis of the world, and had very good success. I think Aaron Jeffrey is, you know, a Kyle Barhalo fight away from being in the UFC and possibly having a win or two at this point. Uh, good experience here. Austin Vandeford. I don't think he's faced that great of a level of competition. Uh, I'm not sure he's that, you know, legit of a uh, welter or middleweight. I look at him more as a welterweight. So um, even though he's been a middleweight, so I might look dumb on Friday, but I got Aaron Jeffrey. I got him uh, getting the finish, man. Uh, I think he really can, you know, pour it on in the second and third round on Austin, who could really dump his gas tank early. Both guys looked great at weigh-ins. Um, next fight is at heavyweight. Gokan Saki, or Siracom, not Gokan Saki, sorry. It, there's a, so, certain names. Gokan Siracom uh, taking on Saeed Salma here. Um, this is a, this is an interesting heavyweight fight. Gokan 7-1, uh, only loss coming to Steve Maury out of uh, Turkey. Uh, Steve Maury put him in that uh, Kimura in round two to get that loss. Um, but since then, three straight wins for him. Uh, went over a 1-0 and Joppy House. Holton knocked him out with ground and pound, obviously. Uh, weighing in around 240 for that fight. Weighed in around 235 against a bloated record of a 7-1. Charlie Milner really wasn't impressed, 15-second knockout there. And then uh, came in around 247 against Real Sil Sildelnikov, also known as Baby Fedor. So uh, seems to be getting a little bit bigger here, but really didn't blow me away with that decision over baby Fedor, a guy who's very hittable, his defense is lacking. I think you should be able to put away um, if you're Gokhan, but he did get the decision there. Look, looks like he's gaining a little bit of size as he's going. Said Salma, very, very tricky guy. I ATT eight and three coming off a close loss to Davion Franklin, who then further got exposed in his next fight, which we called. Um, but yeah, Said Salma just sometimes is a, lacks a little bit of aggressiveness. He does have a win over Vitaly Minikov. I mean, he was holding his own in that. Minikov broke his uh, finger, though, and just asked for the fight to be stopped. Minikov was on his way to winning that fight. More like, <laughs> nah, I'm the dog, bro. I ain't no goat, but I appreciate it, Mr. X. Uh, I love your avatar picture. Um, but, uh, yeah, I appreciate that love. With Said Salma... I went over Hani Marks and then lost his Ty Tyrell Fortune and Davion Franklin in there. It's a little bit of a mixed bag there, um, just overall for me with Said Salma. As I went over uh, bare knuckle fighter Quinn Henry, he lost to Steve Mowry back in the day as well. 
uh, by retirement uh, in Titan FC. Just kind of a weird overall record here. Um, I don't really know how this fight's going to go. I just have a feeling Said Salma uh, spoils the day either by decision or maybe he's able to get, you know, get this fight to a point where he can kind of, you know, expose a little bit of the wrestling weakness of Gokhan. But he's never really wrestled, so it's hard to really predict that. I don't know. I'm just – I'm going to edge towards the experience of Said Salma, though. Um, Gokhan does show to kind of slow as he goes through the fights, and I just don't trust the level of competition he's faced. So minus 185, Gokhan Sirkom uh, is the favorite, which I'm quite surprised about, plus 150, Said Salma. I think he's going to be a live dog, uh, and I'm going to take a shot on the winning decision here. So personally, I'm over Franklin as well. But this is not a fight I'm over invested in. I'm just not sold on Syracom yet. So might be sold after this Salma fight. Um, Ilum, uh, Iluma Le McFarlane versus Bruna Ellen. McFarlane missed weight by uh, three pounds, uh, weighing at 129 pounds. She's got the uh, thumbs down as she's weighing in. Um, she gets very, very big between fights. Um and, uh, yeah, I just kind of have some questions about her overall uh, desire at this point. She is 11-2, so very impressive. Bruna Ellen, 6-3, and three, did make weight. Uh, Nova Girakau, Muay Thai here. Um, coming off of a very close split decision over Desiree Yanez, a uh, wrestler. Uh, before that, went to a decision with Juliana Velasquez. She did lose that. That was in 2019. Ilina uh, Kaladuna. Caledon, uh, the Greek fighter who's really been on a roll. She won a decision there and then uh, lost to Christina Williams. Um, she's been very inconsistent, but does, you know, look to be in good shape and look to, you know, pretty, pretty determined here. But McFarlane was brought in this fight to definitely get a win coming off of two straight losses uh, to Juliana Vel Velasquez and then uh, Justine Keish back in April. Justine Keish, she did make weight. Um, but before that, I mean, she's had weight issues before she overcut against Juliana Velasquez, um, you know, and just things like that. But yeah, it's a bad sign, man. Um, and everything like that. And, uh, Kali, uh, McKee, Downey, whole kit, well, whole kids fight. It's off Haka, um, and show and fellow parlay. It, it should hit, but you're getting like minus like what 300 on all that. And PFL 8 predictions are going to be at the end of the video. I'm just going to do a quick pick because that's what PFL deserves at this point. Um, this is a fight I'm not really too interested in getting involved in, I'll be honest. Um, I'm going to take McFarlane, level of competition, now having a four-pound weight advantage. But four, missing by four pounds is not a good look at all. Uh, I don't really trust her condition and really her desire uh, at all. Uh, got it added with a UFC and PFL. Yeah, I mean, you can do that, Haka. I think mean, all all uh, four of those guys should come in, honestly. So I would put those with your cross-promotion parlay share. Well, um, here, I'm going to take McFarlane. I'm not crazy about it at all. Uh, Bruna Allen winning this fight wouldn't shock me at all. McFarlane, a very slight favorite at minus 120, and I'm still not considering betting her. I think there's a reason. I think she's pretty checked out of the game at this point, um, and I don't see her sticking around too much longer. Either way, I think she's a commentator at this point. So co-main event time, Steve Mowry all of a sudden in the deep end here with Valentin Maltadovsky, former champion. Uh, this is going to be, uh, you know, a difficult one for big Steve, uh, who is, you know, he's a pure grappler. Yeah, he lost to Nick Rodriguez uh, back with uh, Submission Underground, but still, or with Fury grappling, but 30 years old. Uh, Boca Raton, Florida, with Sanford MMA. 17 straight wins going back to his amateur career. 6'8", 79-inch reach. Big Steve. We know him. We love him. Uh, coming off of a Kamara win over Keem Cleveland last November. Sean Asher, a need a, need a ground and pound win. Sean Teed. Golkan Siracom. Siracom having a lot of success in that first round. Uh, and inside the um, Val inside the distance. Any thoughts? I'm not Ben Val at all, man. I'm really not. I think it's going to be ugly. So I would leave it alone, but it depends on the number you're getting UFC betting experience. Um, but, yeah, Steve, I mean, he's had some great wins, a lot of Kimura Americana type of wins. He's a world-class grappler, uh, retired Saeed Sama and Titan FC in one of his more impressive wins, undefeated as an amateur. His stand-up is rough, man. 
leaves a lot of holes. Gokhan Sirikon was starting to fill those a little bit before he gassed. Um, leaves his body susceptible to body shots. Um, and just overall for Steve, he worries me until he gets the fight to the ground. Now, if he gets the fight to, to the ground, he really can finish anybody in this division, in my opinion. But Valentin Maltodovsky, very, very good. Never been finished by submission. And he's faced a fantastic array of fighters since his amateur career and his pro career. Coming off a loss to Ryan Bader here. Steve, you know, is going to have a lot of problems. Yeah, plus 275. I'm not crazy about it, man. This could be a, it could be a real ugly decision. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, look at the pictures of McFarlane with her thumb down, looking soft. I don't love it. Um, Sanford MMA Vitamins, indeed, Moist Audio, except for uh, Ludovic Klein, who's lost well, 0 2 with uh, Sanford MMA. And uh, with Spartacus, he's much better. So he doesn't get the vitamins, I guess. Maltodovsky, he's been in there with just much lever, better level of competition. Steady as he goes, a lot of decisions. Uh, good quick strikes, good leg kicks. Uh, lacks the power, but I do think that Steve leaves himself open enough. Uh, Going to ask PFL question, but I'll wait till you're doing PFL prediction. Uh, yeah, no problem. I'll talk, be right there, man, in like two seconds, so don't worry about it. Um, I think Maltodovsky is too fast, too well-rounded. Uh, to get stuck in Steve Mowry's grappling games. I don't think Steve has the wrestling, and I think on the feet, Maltodovsky's got some big advantages. Steve leaves holes. Maltodovsky could get a KO finish, even though he's gotten a lot of decisions lately. Uh, minus 180, I love for Baltine Maltodovsky. Big Steve, big step up, and I think he is going to crumble here, and Maltodovsky wins this one. But could be, a, you know, could be Steve. Uh, I wouldn't be mad, but I'm going to be uh, – I'd like Maltodovsky there at minus 180. On to the main event, and then PFL quick picks, and I'll get to your question, Haka. You can put it down whenever you want if you don't, if you don't want to wait. But uh, main event time, uh, grappling uh, two grapplers who are a little bit, you know, not huge for the welterweight division. They're appropriately sized, I guess you could say. Neiman Gracie versus Goti Yamauchi. This one's going to be awesome. I'm very excited. I hope this hits the ground. Goti uh, looking like he's made the right decision moving up to welterweight here. Levon Chokili uh, getting armbarred back in April, looking really good there. Uh, the Chris Gonzalez fight was at a catch weight, um, which he weighed in at 155 in all fairness and uh, got kind of finished with the, you know, the ground and pound and the punches. So definitely two straight finishes. Overall, Gochi, a very good finisher recently, four straight finishes in his four wins, a close split decision loss against Dan Moret, where maybe he kind of realized he can't quite push the pace he can when he was making that cut. Looks to fill in very nicely at 170. Both these guys did make weight. Neiman Gracie going to be slightly taller at six foot, but a similar reach on these guys. Uh, and I do think that Gochi, you know, is uh, going to be a little stronger, but even only, but Neiman's going to be a little longer. I think on the feet, Gochi slightly is going to have an edge. Logan Storley had a lot of success with the boxing in their fight. And, uh, you know, that's always a red flag. Jason Jackson, same thing. And Rory McDonald, same thing. Uh, when he's able to kind of, you know, when he was able to grapple against John Fitch, obviously put him in that heel hook and got him finished. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, Mark Leminger, Neiman never looked better with that striking. So he, his striking has improved a lot, and he could, you know, do really well. But for me, um, yeah, I really like Gochi's uh, momentum coming into this fight, man. Uh, I think that uh, they size up very well. They matched, you know, in the face-offs, they look to be a similar size. I just think Gochi pushes a pace a little bit more than Neiman. Sometimes Neiman needs to at the fight to kind of be at a comfortable pace, be able to throw the leg kicks out and, you know, work his jab and everything. I think Gochi can crash the distance a little bit, use his power. Uh, in this, I'd expect the grappling to mostly be null and void for this one, um, but both guys could have success in that too. This is a really close fight, and I'm surprised the odds are as far away as they are. So I'm taking a shot at the underdog Gochi Yamauchi, uh, plus 400 by decision. I really like. That's great. Over three and five as well. Um, yeah, this is going to be a good fight, man. Um, really looking forward to this. It's from Sioux Falls, so I don't. And 27-5 versus 11-3. Gochi has tripled the amount of fights, and I think plenty still left in the tank here. Um, 29 years old still. Uh, Gochi is my pick, and at plus 160, I love it. So um, that is the 13-fight Bellator card. I'm going to move over to the PFL, and then again, top of the hour or maybe slightly before, I'm going to be live with Norton 
of or Lewis of Northern MMA for the Cage Warriors breakdown. Cage Warriors taking place Saturday morning. We got three uh, cards on Saturday, including the PFL card here. Uh, PFL eight, the playoffs. Um, I've already kind of made it clear I'm not going to be spending a crazy amount of time on PFL the rest of the year um, because PFL I just think has been run a little rough. So uh, it's going to be a quick picks. Let me know any questions you might have in the comments now would be the time for pfl questions as i quickly go through the card i'm not going to you know click on and go into a ton of detail this is just quick picks and uh, i can explain more if you want to ask me on twitter aaron j brooks or aaron the dog guy on uh instagram or in the comments here i'm happy to answer it lee chadwick versus premazio malaysia M mizala who knows um i'll you know i can't take you know, this Primozel guy too seriously, the Polish fighter, but I'll take a quick look at him. Uh, lost his last fight by KO to a 9-1 fighter, Ursulin. He uh, has knockouts, uh, or he's finished in each of his fights. Lost to Maurice Green on the Ultimate Fighter way back in the day. So, you know, Lee Chadwick, um, you know, not really a big 205-er at this point. Had a lot of trouble last fight with the Polish fighter and Rosaniki. Because of the size, I think the size is going to hurt him again. So I'll take uh, Malaysia, sure. Why not? Yo, yo, get these PFL quick picks in. I'm working on it, Norton. Uh, Hafel Moleli versus Sizman Bajor. What are we doing here, dude? Moleli, uh, I remember seeing this guy. Was super unimpressed with him. But, uh, you know, then his fight with Jeremy Kimball got canceled. Um, he's on, he's, you know, he's a good striker. I'll take, I'll take the German. Why not? Chris Mixon, I really like Chris Mixon, okay? Um, and he's taking on a Swedish guy named Kristen Stig Stigenberger. Stigenberg, uh, three and one here uh, coming into this fight. Uh, he's been to a decision in two of his three wins. He's not faced the best level of competition. Uh, yeah, I like Chris Mixon a lot here. He looked good on his PFL Challengers fight, and I think he keeps it rolling. Mixed in, I got over uh, Marcin Wojciech. Uh, sure, I'll take Mixed in. Uh, at 205 uh, here, uh, might be undersized. Ermin uh, Emron uh, Sakazada versus Josh O'Connor. Give me Emron, why not? Uh, ben Ellis, I've got over Nate Kelly. Ben Ellis is the Welsh Khabib. Uh, looked really good over in Cage Warriors. I think he keeps it rolling with the wrestling and cage pressure here at 145. Carlos Leo versus Sabadu Sai. Um, I think this is a really interesting fight. I'm shocked Sabu Dusai is so close in the odds here. I personally think Carlos Leo crashes the distance and kind of smothers Sabu Dusai and takes a decision or gets a finish. Uh, the next set uh, is the 265 tournament final here between Juan Adams and Matthias Scheffel. I'm not picking Matthias Scheffel against anybody, including Juan Adams. Juan Adams by KO. Um, Bruno Souza threw that fight. Bruno clearly threw that fight. Capuloza clearly threw that fight. Anti Dalia versus Renan Henan Ferreira. Um, I personally think Henan Ferreira is kind of a wolf tickets myself. Uh, I think that he's you know kind of big and has good power against you know low levels of competition. But I think Dalia uh, can you know kind of just get a boring decision. Maybe you know just kind of. Lay on him, stay out of trouble. But I think Dalia has enough of a chin to survive the strikes of Hen and Freya and take a decision. Um, Roy McDonald, uh, originally was supposed to be against the Russian uh, fighter in uh, Magomed Umalatov. Guess what? Umalatov had visa issues. So now they give Roy McDonald, uh, Delano Taylor. Delano Taylor could eventually be good. They're rushing, they're rushing his career and might possibly be stunning his growth as a result. Um, but, you know, I don't really trust Roy McDonald that much at this point, but I think he has enough to get by Delano Taylor. Uh, Mokhtar ben Nakadi versus Francesco Nuzzi at 135. I'll take Francesco Nuzzi. Uh, Bavor, uh, Volchot Bavoric versus Maximun Radu. What are we doing here? I'll take the Serbian uh, and Volgito. Uh, and then Wilfer Fleury versus Anthony Salomon. Anthony Salomon, 7-0 out of France, hasn't faced a uh, low level of competition no i'm not taking honestly i'm taking o'connor over emron i would i i just didn't really i'm not going to look into that fight too much no josh o'connor can definitely beat emron uh but 
Uh, here, Will Flurry, he has the experience. Anthony Salomon, we don't really know how legit he is yet. Give me uh, Will Flurry. So I'm not putting a lot of uh, not putting a lot into PFL Haka. If you have any questions right now, would be the time uh, for my PFL plays. Carlos Leo is my only play. So the rest of it, I am not investing in from a betting perspective. So uh, I will take Carlos Leo at minus 120 over Sabadusai. Uh, Haka, do you have any other questions before I take off? Emron versus Josh O'Connor. Honestly, I'm not going to be putting any money on that. So I'll leave it open for questions for about two more, you know, about another minute. And then otherwise, I'm going to uh, wrap up here. And then Lewis and I will be back to cover the PFA or the Cage Warriors uh, card from Wales. So um, should be a good one. Sam Creasy finally getting a chance to fight. Um, not as opponent. Hopefully makes weight. So um, let me know any other questions, Haka. Or anybody else. Otherwise, I'm going to sign off uh, for now and be right back with Lewis. So uh, now I'm going to choose for all the info I needed from the vid. All right. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, good luck with your bets. And hopefully, I'll see you for the Cage Warriors breakdown in a minute. We're going to be live in about five minutes. See you guys. Peace.